So currently we have one C star S 50 out in the driveway and we have another one on the way. One of those lucky C stars is going to be heading to Starfront observatory in Texas. So some things have changed. Some things have remained the same. I'm Chad. This is the easy Astro images channel. Let's get back to playing with some photons today. Appreciate everybody standing by with the channel while we were on a little couple month hiatus. Quite honestly, it was a horrible summer with nothing but like heat and humidity and clouds and rain. It was just dreadful. So things that have changed. Well, we have the other sea star coming. We've already made our reservation at Starfront. We've got the Mac Mini. We've got miscellaneous things showing up and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully within about, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, it'll be on its way down there. And maybe within the next month, we will be up and imaging with an S50 down at Starfront. Now, what happened to all of the other setups that I had? Well, it really just comes down to simple math. In the video I made like over a year and a half ago, we got back into Astro Imaging hardcore. We went mono. We had a great time with it for a couple months. And then everything that I was afraid that was going to happen happened again. Problems, issues, all kinds of things like that, weather and everything. And quite honestly, something to talk about here coming up is that mono imaging is one of those things that you don't think is going to be that difficult until you actually try to do it. And then all of a sudden you find yourself that you have a mix of different data. You have incomplete projects and so on and so forth. And I know some imagers will go ahead and just throw out projects with an hour or two of data per channel and produce a certain type of images. But again, if you're going to have eight to $10,000 worth of equipment sitting out in your driveway, doing something like that, it better be working for you. And the amount of like little hiccups that I started to just kind of see, and then going back and forth, ideally between a couple different setups, I just didn't think at the time it was worth it to just make the plunge and put out that much money per month and send everything down there and just have to deal with tickets and all that kind of stuff. So I'm taking a more sensible approach. I unloaded all of that stuff and I'm going with the multi C star approach. I was hoping by now we would have like an S 50 pro or at least the S 30 pro something like that going on but it just isn't happening. It sounds like until the beginning of 2026, obviously with all of the political environment and all that kind of stuff, things have happened, but really it is fine with me because getting the data, doing the processing and trying to be like the real, I don't know, like an astrophotographer on a budget and show people how amazing of results you can get that like we've demonstrated with these telescopes it's more appealing, at least for me, to provide content about than I've seen nothing for the past couple months but just gear reviews and really just people just force feeding content to try to keep their algorithms going. And I've been on YouTube for years with the RC stuff. I'm not going to just keep doing that kind of stuff. Like that was one thing with this channel. I was going to put out videos when I felt I had relevant stuff to talk about or things to do or cool things came out. Now, if people were sending me all of this stuff to change, that's fine. And if you did a review of a USB power bank or whatever the hell that was that came out a month and a half ago that spammed my feed, that's all right. I mean, you got something for free and all of that good view money and all that kind of stuff. So it is what it is. Speaking of view money, Hey, you know, you can support us here. If you like what we're doing, we have the join button down below. You could also do the super chat thing, super tip thing, whatever else you want to do. So we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. So we'll get all the C star stuff here and we'll hook it up with the Mac mini and all that play around with that. I have been playing around with something that I think is pretty interesting, but I can kind of see why it never caught on as much as it did. And that is the C star local hosting. It's basically the APL program. So this allows you to 
log into your C-Star and do some adjustment type of things that the app does not let you do. There's not a whole lot extra that you can do besides kind of play with gain, kind of mess around with like dither settings that might be able to kind of clean things up a little bit, but there's really no like magic bullet here. But the good thing about it is, is that if you wanted to send a Raspberry Pi or a Nook or something like that and didn't want to spend the money on, say, like a Mac Mini to send to Starfront, this does kind of open up that kind of possibility. The only thing is, is that you would never be able to do any kind of firmware updates or anything like that at all because you would still need your iOS app, so you would have to figure out a whole nother way around that but you know it's pretty neat like you again you can connect to this thing and you can just do all kinds of cool stuff here you've got schedulers you've got of course the live view that works just like it's it's literally just like having the app except it's not so it's more of that kind of like nina sequencing type of thing if you want to you can also link it to stellarium which is pretty cool. So if you find like that hidden gem, you can import that kind of stuff over to it. So it makes that process a lot easier than trying to like shortcut yourself away around the ZWO catalog to get to like a specific target that might not be listed in one of their catalogs. But hey, you know, we've got options here, which is pretty cool. And I didn't even know that this thing was in development pretty much all of like last year. And it seems like the developers themselves stopped putting out like stable versions around April or May, but then I loaded mine today from source and people are always merging things into GitHub and making improvements on it and everything as well. So it is being kind of updated, but again, I haven't seen nothing there that would make it a better experience for 99% of the people that are out there. Again, the Solarium integration is pretty cool. That's about it though. So we haven't had any kind of like new accessories or new scopes or anything like that that kind of intrigue me. I've seen a lot of cool things going on with uh, software, but there's just not been anything kind of groundbreaking out there to see. Uh, there's been a lot of great content that I've watched, of course. Uh, SETI has been doing some great stuff. Star Story, of course, has been doing stuff. And Dylan's videos are always entertaining. But when it comes to, like, the rest of the, the crowd and the usual suspect, it's, you know, I, the bigger channels and stuff, it's just uh, kind of getting a little bit too markety for me. And, it, you know, it is what it is. People got to make their money, and this is what they choose to do. But this is what we are choosing to do here. So we're going to maybe even add a second one down at SRO or definitely a second one here and just kind of just kind of plow through these things. You know, again, you can have 10 of these C stars for the price of literally a camera with some filters and a mount. And you can have them out there all it's one cool thing with this thing, but you could do it with the app too. You could hook these things up with in, a, in an array format and they will basically do everything side by side in perfect unison and harmony, which is pretty neat. And I see that people struggle to do that with, you know, triple Rosses on a mount. So it's pretty cool to see that like a $500 telescope is actually capable of doing something like that. So that's going to be it, guys. We are collecting data the next two or three nights. We're going to be just shooting some basic objects to kind of get ourselves out there and get our feet wet and to kind of make another push for the C-Star users to show them what these things are capable of. There's been so much great feedback on the channel that people have gotten into like PixInsight, City Astro Suite really are pushing the boundaries, understanding that like doubling up on C stars or just time on target, you can produce amazing results. You're not stuck with just the little live image that is on your phone. There is so much more to these little telescopes. So hopefully you guys stick with me here on the channel. It's all processing and all that kind of stuff when it comes down to it. 
You know, you can only do one system review type at a time because I'm not going to keep on just buying cameras and mounts and all that stuff just to feed some kind of useless algorithm. I've done that for 10 years and I'm still in this basement. So we will talk to you guys later. Appreciate each and every one of you. Peace.